kids are becoming simultaneous consumers and creators of digital media. Uh, remixes, copy and paste, uh, mashups. It's really entering the way they communicate. What this workshop does is show them how to do it effectively, legally, and ethically, using the material of others, but putting them together in, in original and creative and compelling ways. What we're going to do is we're going to read the scene from the play, stay with Shakespeare's language, then we're going to remix music and sound effects to make a real audio play. Shakespeare was made to be edited. He edited himself on the spot. The scene is Macbeth has sort of his plan to take over the kingdom. He has to kill a few people first. So he's got these murderers doing it. I have three volunteers just to read this through. Cool, okay, one, two, three. But who did bid the join with us? Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust since he delivers. Our offices and what we have to do. Good job, you guys had it down pat. Now we're gonna need some sound effects though, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do footsteps, but what, the way you're gonna do it is you're gonna crunch potato chips as if they're footsteps, all right? Why don't you use two hands like you have two feet. <laughs> that was good. I just wanna show you how the track's looking now, all right? Like that. He needs not our mistrust since he delivers. Our offices and what we have to do to the direction of Jeff. Now we need some horses. Uh, I need two volunteers for some horses. Okay, now choose two weapons here. Uh, your coconuts. See if you can make a horse sound. Okay. Um, it's not even about the technology. I think it's just more about adapting a willingness to give up more control to the students and have them create. You guys can work in your groups of three and I'll come around and help you out one-on-one -on -one. to do the first scene of Macbeth where the three witches sort of set the, set the tone of the whole play. Uh, you're going to record the witches' lines. We'll go over them right now. It always surprises me because kids take it in directions I never anticipated before. When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or rain? When the herb early's done, when the battle's lost and won. Uh, you also have some sounds for uh, the two lines. Now, traditionally, Gray Malkin has been uh, a cat, but you can have it anything you want. I have a whole bunch of sounds for you to choose from. Like, what is this right here? What's that sound effect right there? Let me see. <laughs> okay, that's a possibility. So you can choose anything you want for these sound effects. And then you're going to have to pick a background track, too. And your group of three are going to have to record the witches, just like you guys did. That will be air the set of sun. Where are the plays? Fair is foul and foul is fair. Over through the fog and filthy air. <laughs> you guys are perfectionists. You should have been recording that. The performance-based techniques of Shakespeare, the audio editing software, all the sort of fun and mystery of uh, Foley artists and, uh, you know, final products that really kids really uh, respond to. It was sort of a, a match made in heaven. As teenagers, I think that it helps us to listen than read. I don't, I don't know. It's just something with like me. Like, read when you're, like, just reading, paper, like, words on a piece of paper, it doesn't really catch your attention, whereas, though, when you hear somebody's voice, you're like, oh. You just point them in the right direction, and, you know, they're leading the way.